Hi, my name is Karen Boniker and I'm Elite Painter Master and today I'd like to show you how to use the new Cloud Brushes for Painter Essentials. My work is known for the use of light and I would like to share with you some of the secrets of achieving a powerful light effect in your paintings using two new brush packs for Painter Essentials called Clouds and Sunny Rays. To begin, I'd like to go through each one of the brushes very simply to show you how to work with them. And then I'll finish a painting using some of these brushes to give you a good idea of some of the beautiful effects that you can get. The first brush we're going to look at is called Cl Cloud Puff and it's in the Essential Cloud Brush category. And when I start um, working with these brushes, I always like to use the Reset tool to restore the brush to default so I can work with it and understand what I can do with the brush in terms of size and opacity and even grain. So I've got a nice dark background here because I want, to, want you to be able to see this brush as I work with it. Cloud Puff is uh, one of my favorite brushes because the real trick to this one is firm pressure on your stylus will give you lots of saturated brush stroke. It's going to give you lots of paint in the brush. When you use very soft pressure, however, the brush performs differently and creates very soft and feathery edges. So it's a beautiful brush for creating what we would call those cumulus clouds that tend to be very, very, um, very large and very soft and uh, almost feel like you they're they're transparent like you can see through them so use this brush again um, with very soft pressure uh, to get this nice wispy blending effect and then um, use it with firmer pressure to get the shape of the cloud in so if I wanted to get more of a shape going on here uh, of a cloud shape something like this and then a little bigger brush and then very soft pressure you can see how I can soften the edges and I also um, along this brush um, works very nicely for creating that those look of little tendrils that tend to fly out from the um, from the edges of cloud so you can use that kind of just to flow Use a nice small brush and use it just to create some really nice cloud effects. So big brush, soften your edges, pull out, and you can see that you can just get these beautiful cloud effects. You'll want to sample your colors. Um, you, I do that often because um, I want that cloud to be able to show good form, good shape. So there always tends to be a lighter side of the cloud and a darker side. And uh, just sampling your colors will help you to get those uh, that feeling in and that feeling of a real uh, cumulus cloud blending. The first brush in the category is called Azura Blender. And this one, um, again, I like to use it to create those, those look of tendrils coming out from an existing cloud shape. Um, so I often will use this one just to give me that special effect. You can use it just to kind of sh uh, sculpt out the shape that you're looking for. It's, a, it's really a fun brush to work with and cr can create these beautiful beautiful shapes and feeling of lofty, airy clouds. The next brush is Feathery White and we'll reset this and um, <clears throat> I'm going to go down a little bit lower on this sample page here so you can kind of see the, what this brush does and I'm going to go ahead and clear that layer out and we'll just start on a new layer here. And I use this brush basically in a circular motion 
and it is a great brush for building up the shape of a cloud such as thunderheads or just your basic cumulus clouds. You can work with the opacity of the brush and get a very soft effect with lower opacity. And bringing the opacity up on the brush, a much more saturated brush stroke. Every cloud has a dark side and a light side, and this is what helps to give you the shape and form as you build your clouds up. Bring the opacity down, a little bigger brush, and then we can kind of blend and soften those edges. The next brush we're going to take a look at is called Mare's Tells. And for this, let's use a nice bright color here. And how I tend to use this brush is these upward strokes. And you can see that it's just a very soft and flowing kind of brush. Firm pressure, you're going to get lots of saturation in the brush stroke, lots of color. And soft pressure, you're going to get a lovely kind of blending effect. So it's a beautiful brush for creating sunsets, firm pressure, and soft pressure will blend. And then I love working with it this way where you get these nice upward strokes. So it can show lots of um, movement and shape lots of movement going on in your sky with this brush. This is called Mare's Tails. The next brush is called Puffy Fair Weather. And this brush, again, I like to start off with um, kind of a light value. Again, you can notice right away that this brush is very kind of organic, um, kind of abstract in the way that it lays down the cloud shape. But in fact, it's one of my favorites for working with clouds. I love the, um, the, the, the shapes that it creates. So for uh, landscape painting, um, this would be my go-to brush for creating beautiful shapes of clouds. And this brush is based on direction um, in terms of the way that the brush moves when you put the uh, pressure onto the stylus. So you can see that it, the brush stroke is actually rotating and going around in circles. And this is the reason why this brush gives you such a creative and organic look. Very natural looking. And you can just come up with some beautiful um, natural looking uh, cloud shapes. So one of my favorites. Again, I often sample the colors, the surrounding colors, to um, strengthen the value contrast going on in clouds. You can change the size of the brush, work the edges if you need to get a little more saturated. And a bigger brush will give you more of that abstract look. Soft pressure and just pull out from the edges. You're just going to get a very, very, very soft edge on the cloud. One of my favorites, Puffy Fair Weather. The next brush is called Puffy White, and this one I'll start off with a little different color here. We'll go with more of a gold color, and um, I like starting off with this one. Um, notice how it picks up some of the colors, the underlying colors. So it's a really great brush to, um, if you're just starting off learning how to paint clouds, 
it's a great one to begin with because it almost automatically gives you those lighter and darker values and starts to create the shape and the form of the cloud almost automatically for you. Again, this one is based again on that rotation of the brush when you lay it down. So you're going to get these nice uh, shapes that um, form on the canvas as you're painting. Again, I like to, uh, again, sample color and create that light side, dark side. And again, you can see how the value can help to build the shape of the cloud. The next brush we're looking at is called Storm Clouds. This one um, is a beautiful brush for creating that very, very soft, ethereal type of cloud. One of my absolute favorites in the group. Firm pressure will blend your edges out, soften the edges, and soft pressure will add color. Firm pressure, blend, soft pressure, color. And notice how I'm just kind of pulling the edges out. Giving that cloud a very soft ethereal feeling. Use a nice small brush. To build in different shapes. And to show distance. For blending, you'll want to keep your stylus on the tablet, just nice firm pressure. And soft pressure for color. And that's storm clouds. The next brush is called Thunderhead Building, and I'm going to use um, a darker value for this one. I think I'll go more into the blues. And when I start to work with this brush, we'll go ahead and reset it to default. Um, it's a good brush for building the base of a cloud. So whether it's going to be a thunderhead or whether it's going to be, you know, a, a more of a cumulus style cloud, um, it's a great brush for setting up the shape and the form of the cloud. Um, this one also has a option where you can use soft pressure to settle down the edges, to uh, soften the edge. So don't forget to use different sizes with this brush. This is where you get the best effect when building clouds. And soft pressure again with this one will soften the edges and blend, blend those edges for you. So if I'm looking to give a softer edge on the bottom side of the cloud, I can just very, very apply very soft pressure here to achieve that effect.
and that's Thunderhead Building. The next brush is Thunderheads, and this is one of my favorite brushes for building up the actual shape of the Thunderhead. So I would use that um, on one side or the other, um, depending upon where I have decided my light source is strongest, and I'll use that just to build up the shape and height of the Thunderheads. Again, I'll sample using my Alt key, the colors that I want to pull in. While I start to build the shape. And then firm pressure with this brush, you can blend. And soft pressure will create the shape or the saturation. We'll take it up to a very light color and then just pull that around the edges very gently. And this will create that final light. We'll sample put firm pressure on and then just blend that edge just to the very, just enough to where there's still some of that silver lining. giving our clouds beautiful form and light. And that's Thunderheads. The last brush is called Wispy. And this one I use basically to um, pull edges out or to um, basically flatten the underside of a cloud. The other wonderful way of using this brush is for sunsets. So you can use it to create those wispy clouds that you tend to see across a beautiful sunset. So there really is no end to the beauty you can create with these brushes, the clouds, shapes you can achieve. Let's go now to the finished painting and show you some of the ways that you can utilize these brushes. You can see where I've used many, many of the brushes in this brush pack. <clears throat> and I'm going to start off with uh, the Thunderhead brush. And I'm going to sample some color here and then use it at a relatively small size to just build up some of these clouds here. You can see Mayor's Tail in the background, Mayor's Tail over here. And 
And here I want to bring in the look of some floating clouds that are more in the dis in the feet in the uh, middle ground of the painting. Just to create that sense of depth. So sampling color is important. And keeping the shape of the clouds and that feeling of distance. I'm going to go to Puffy White or Cloud Puff and use it as a blender with firm pressure to soften the edges a bit and maybe build this up a little and soften it. And soft pressure here just to, again, soften the edges. Mare's Tail, and you know, once you start using these a few times, you'll start recognizing where you can use the brush most effectively. We'll soften these edges. Keep our edges always darker and softer at the edge. And so this painting was all done with these brushes. And capturing the storm coming across the plains. So I hope you enjoy working with these brushes as much as I have enjoyed working with them. Um, there are brushes that I will definitely want to pull into my arsenal of brushes uh, to work with in Painter and Painter Essentials. Enjoy.